All right, guys, so today we are at the dyno. What we're dynoing is a 1999 Mercedes-Benz E300 turbo diesel. And this car is completely stock. You can see it's even dirty. I got it delivered a month ago. It's been sitting outside on the street. I haven't done a single thing to it. It's exactly as it arrived. Um, nothing fancy. This is glued on. It's rusting out. It's from uh, Ohio. And you can see the miles that it has. Um, almost 360,000 miles. Okay. So it's a well used engine. High mileage. Engine is completely stock. I haven't even done the, I usually bypass the fuel heater, the shutoff valve, um, the pre filter. I haven't done any of that routing. It's completely stock. The user, or sorry, the, the person before me did put on a, a cone filter. I'm not a fan of those. I don't recommend doing it. That's just the way it came. And since we're stationary doing the dyno, it's not really gonna make a difference if we have cooler air coming from outside because we're stopped. We just have some big fans to blow some air on the front. Um, stock turbo, stock ECU. It has a cat but it's gutted out and then it's straight piped with two and a half inch straight pipe. Um, also, I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm just giving you the specs on how this car is, how I got it. And we're gonna give it a couple of dyno runs. First, we're just gonna do stock everything, like I said. And then after that, we're gonna swap out the ECU for a stage 1.5. Results. This is the fourth time that we did a pull, and you can see they're all right around 100 horsepower. Uh, this is with the stock ECU, stock everything. It's limiting RPM just above 4,500. So now, now we're going to change out the ECU to a stage 1.5, and we're going to do another dyno a couple times and see what we get. So the best pull was 185. All right. Yeah, go ahead. The problem that we had is that a lot of times it was kicking into fourth. We don't know why, because the lever was only in third. But for some reason, I don't know if the transmission's so, shot. So stock, right, and then third gear, and then your max power on fourth gear. So we'll, we'll get these on the screen, we'll look at more of them into detail, but basically uh, 185, that was our highest horsepower, and our highest torque was uh, 356. Alright, so here's kind of a review of everything we did. It looks like 10 runs, um, a couple of them we had problems, you can see like this one, so they're just a lot of runs on here and sorry if it's kind of hard to see I don't know why it's such bad quality but anyways these ones over here that are longer for some reason I've never done a dyno before this is the first person that I've talked to in my city that would even dyno my car because all the rest of them would say oh I need a 
way to get RPM from your engine or we only dyno, you know, Cummins and power strokes and big diesel trucks. You have a car, blah, blah, blah. So what he did, his name was Rich, and he said, we're going to use third gear. And I set up the dyno by putting the car at a stable 2000 RPM and he worked his magic on the dyno and he went up that. So he said, what we're going to do is we're only going to go up to first. So you're going to go into first gear, rev it up, you know, around 2000 to get into the second gear. So this is just the stock uh, 722.608 transmission, right? So I'm just using the, the lever shift stir to do this. So put it into first, put it into second, put it into third, and then third is when I would um, basically floor it. And we kind of had to play with that as well. The first couple of times I just floored it. And then after that, when we started having these issues over here, it was acting like it was kicking into fourth which I don't know how it could do that because I had the lever specifically in third, but that's what he thought was happening is that something was off. But anyways, we'll have to figure that out. But I still feel like um, it was a success. We got some good information here. So um, the first four runs, which are these ones right here, these were all working. Like we got accurate readings and you can see they're all around 100 horsepower stock. The next one is when I put in the uh, stage 1.5 and the guy, when I did this whole dyno run, he was kind of like, uh, whatever, this is kind of a waste of time. This is a weak little car or whatever. When I put in the stage 1.5 and it burst out a big black smoke behind me, he was face kind of lit up and he was like, whoa, that really... Yeah, that changed things. So right here we got up to 160. So you can see even there, um, even if we were just to say that this first run was the only accurate one, I'm not saying it is, but nonetheless, um, that one gave us 60 horsepower more. And you can see on the torque, quite a bit more. I mean, that's not double, but that's a lot more. Um, so we can just you know, say we went from 100 to 160, 60% increase. I feel like that's pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, this next one is when it wanted to kick into fourth. So I just gave up on it. This one, I can't remember this one. It was doing the same thing. And then finally the guy was just like, just let it go in fourth and just rev it all the way. And so it was going past 5,000 RPM. I was fine with that. I know that these cars like to rev, but he was kind of worried. He's like, this is an old car. You're redlining it. I don't, you know, so he, all, all of these times, he was always telling me like, okay, okay, let go, let go. So maybe it had more in it. I don't know. Um, he's not familiar with the OM606, so he doesn't know that they like to rev. He's used to traditional diesels, I'm sure. Um, so like he said in the video, 185 is the maximum that we got. Um, I've talked to Sean Tracy about this and he doesn't think that these first couple ones are accurate. They do seem kind of low to me, but remember this is wheel horsepower and I did the same thing four times. So unless there was an issue with the way that we dynoed it, which I don't see why, I mean, he custom like set up his dyno around third gear around 2000 RPM. That was kind of his baseline that he did. I don't know how all dynos work and everything he does obviously. Um, but we did the same thing four times and all of them are around a hundred. So going from hundred to 160, like I said, we could just say that's a 60% increase. Um, the best one is 185. So to kind of summarize everything, these are the three that we're going to use. This first one is kind of the average around hundred horsepower. You saw there were a couple little over a little under, so we'll just say hundred horsepower. This is the first run with the stage 1.5 where it stayed in the correct gear like it stayed in third it didn't do something weird at the transmission i can only think that it's going up to fourth but i don't know that's what it felt like it felt like it was going up into fourth but i don't know how it could do that someone's got to explain that to me let me know in the comments or something and then the last one this is where it kept on going up into fourth and he just finally said, like, just let it go. Just even though it's up in fourth, just let it go. Let's just see what your, he's like, your torque number isn't going to be accurate because we need it to be in third gear for the torque to be accurate, but your horsepower will. So the maximum horsepower that we made was 185. 
So there we go. Thanks for watching. Um, hopefully this video is interesting. We plan on doing more. I just kind of wanted to do this to get a baseline first to see what stock cars are. And then as we do different upgrades with turbos, injection pumps and whatnot, then we'll see some more. Uh, I'd love to hear comments and tips. Thanks for watching.